This is news, information, and truth. I promise you can't get anywhere else in the media. And that is tonight's ever important breaking news opening monologue. All right, let's start at the beginning. It was announced today that Paul Manafort, well, something that was pretty much expected after his home was raided by the FBI, was indicted today. It's a 31-page indictment. It discussed charges, and we'll put it up on the side of the screen for you. Money laundering, failing to register as a foreign agent, tax crimes. But interestingly, because this is the special counsel that was supposed to investigate Trump, Russia, collusion, this indictment has nothing, let me repeat, nothing, to do with Trump-Russia collusion. Zip, zero, nada. The most spectacular finding within the Manafort indictment is this. In regards to the financial issues, the last year of any financial transaction was 2014. The years they were looking at was between 2008 and 2014. And as far as we know... Guilty. That is the most important word in this day of historic developments in the special prosecutor's investigation. Guilty. In the very first case that Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller brought in his investigation of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia, Robert Mueller got a guilty, and that happened weeks ago. But we learned about it today. On the same day that Robert Mueller indicted Paul Manafort and his associate Rick Gates on 12 counts, including conspiracy against the United States. Today, the President of the United States tried to pretend that Paul Manafort's conspiracy against the United States was something that happened long before Donald Trump hired Paul Manafort to run his presidential campaign. And that is just another Trump lie. Paul Manafort's alleged crimes against the United States occurred before he joined the Trump campaign and continued while he was on the Trump campaign. Oh, Trump wasn't even thinking of running for president in 2014. So in other words, Nothing of the Paul Manafort indictment had anything to do with the Trump campaign or Donald Trump. Is this all Mueller has? Because if it is, it's pathetic. Another day, another example, after a year of speculation, no evidence of any collusion between President Trump and Russia. Now, you've heard the saying, you've all heard it, you can indict a ham sandwich. Well, grand juries are convened. Guess what? In case you don't know, only the prosecution gets to present evidence. The defense gets zero opportunity whatsoever to present their case. The legal standard before a grand jury is much lower. They must be convinced probable cause. Okay, but in a court of law, the criminal standard is a jury of your peers beyond a reasonable doubt, a massive distinction. And it's important to point out that this grand jury was impaneled in Washington, D.C. Let's see, one of the most liberal cities in America were over... And after he left the Trump campaign and continued right into this year, right into 2017, Paul Manafort was charged with crimes today that he committed this year, as well as years past. Paul Manafort and Rick Gates pleaded not guilty today, which is what everyone was anticipating would be the big news of the day until Robert Mueller revealed this morning that he already had a guilty in a secret federal court arraignment on October 5th. 30-year-old Trump campaign foreign policy advisor George Papadopoulos was charged with lying to the FBI, and he was asked, how do you wish to plead? And he said immediately, I plead guilty. And with those three words, George Papadopoulos stepped into history. He is the very first defendant charged by Robert Mueller, and he is the first to plead guilty. The question tonight, rattling the Trump White House. 90% of the people there voted for Hillary Clinton. Mr. Mueller, do you think that's fair? Now, here's what Paul Manafort's attorney said earlier today for the first time they speak out. Listen. That President Donald Trump was correct. There is no evidence that Mr. Manafort or the Trump campaign colluded with the Russian government. Today, you see an indictment brought by an office of special counsel that is using a very novel theory to prosecute Mr. Manafort regarding a FARA filing. The United States government has only used that offense six times since 1966 and only resulted in one conviction. 
Six times since 1966, one conviction. So like every American, Paul Manafort, he deserves what we all deserve, the presumption of innocence. However, he is being tried tonight and convicted in the court of public opinion by what is an abusively biased, Trump-hating media. Also, as part of the news that came out today... And no doubt, making Donald Trump's insomnia all the more acute tonight is, has George Papadopoulos just become the E. Howard Hunt of this investigation. E. Howard Hunt was the first to plead guilty in the Watergate investigation that brought down the Nixon presidency. After Hunt pled guilty, 55 people were found guilty or pled guilty in that special prosecutor's investigation of Watergate, which culminated in President Nixon being forced to resign the presidency. George Papadopoulos has pled guilty to lying to the FBI <clears throat> in answer to several questions about multiple contacts that he had with Russians and people he believed to be agents of the Russian government and one person he believed to be Vladimir Putin's niece. In other words, he lied to the FBI about collusion with Russians and his own attempted collusion with the Russian. George Papadopoulos, he admitted, okay, he lied to the FBI. I think he's 29 years old. Now, I knew everybody in the Trump campaign. I never heard about Papadopoulos until today. And I think I knew everybody. Now, the White House says he was a volunteer, and it seems that Papadopoulos, on his own, was trying to create an anti-Clinton Russian dossier, like the Fusion GPS Hillary DNC President Obama-funded dossier, and he wasn't successful. So now that we have no Trump collusion, here's what we do have tonight. This is what the media will ignore. This is what matters. These are the facts. This is where the evidence comes in. What did, Hill, what did President Clinton, uh, or President Clinton wannabe, President Obama, and key members of the administration, what did they know about the Uranium One scandal? Now, we're learning about how the Obama administration officials, they knew in 2009 that Vladimir Putin was using bribes, extortion, kickbacks, money laundering, and government continued attempted collusion. The guilty that Robert Mueller got on October 5th re and was revealed today was a guilty about collusion. George Papadopoulos admitted in his guilty plea that one of his Russian sources, quote, told him about the Russians possessing dirt on then-candidate Hillary Clinton in the form of thousands of emails. Papadopoulos lied multiple times about that and lied multiple times about when he learned that information. Lied to the FBI about that. The special prosecutor discovered that Papadopoulos tried to arrange a meeting between candidate Trump and Vladimir Putin. In a brief outlining Papadopoulos' offenses that was submitted to the judge at the arraignment, in writing, the special prosecutor detailed many of Papadopoulos' written communications, but avoided identifying exactly who he was communicating with. And racketeering all within this country, spies within this country, nothing was done to stop it. We have incontrovertible evidence that all involved tried to cover this up. They put a gag order on the one FBI informant that knew everything to prevent the truth from getting out. Now it's getting out. We have incontrovertible evidence that the Clintons benefited in a massive, huge financial way because of this corrupt Uranium One deal. We know Bill Clinton doubled his speaking fees in Moscow, Moscow while giving a speech to a bank that, interestingly enough, had a financial interest in Uranium One. Bill Clinton also tried to get State Department permission, his wife's State Department, to meet with Russian nuclear officials during the time of the Uranium One deal, and he eventually ended up sitting down with Vladimir Putin himself. And as the author, Peter Schweitzer, writes about in his best-selling book, Clinton Cash, the Clinton Foundation got $145 million in kickbacks from people that directly... At one point, the person identified only as campaign supervisor says this about Papadopoulos' collusion with Russians. Great work. George Papadopoulos had a choice when he submitted to a voluntary interview with the FBI. Admit to his collusion with Russians, which he knew was the very heart of the matter that the FBI was investigating. Admit to all that, give it all up, or lie. It wasn't like George Papadopoulos was one of those sad sacks who got tripped up by the FBI and lied about some minor thing 
for which he now has to plead guilty, George Papadopoulos was lying about collusion with Russians. He was lying about the very essence of what the special prosecutor's investigation is all about. In that secret arrangement, the judge asked George Papadopoulos' lawyer, do you concur that the government would be able to prove each of the necessary elements benefited from that deal? We have incontrovertible evidence that Putin and his spies and his thugs were actually successful because he eventually got 20% of America's uranium, the foundational material for nuclear weapons. This is beyond insanity and inexcusable. Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, the Obama administration allowed your national security to be compromised in what is an unprecedented way and few in the media will touch their story. Major crimes were committed, they knew about it, they did nothing before the deal. Now here's a simple question, we have to ask it. Why on earth would President Obama or Hillary or Eric Holder ever sign off on giving Russia a known enemy Putin, a bad actor, 20% control of our uranium. What did America get? What did Obama get from this uranium one deal? It never made sense. Now, we also have incontrovertible evidence that the Clinton... Of the offense beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes, Your Honor, said George Papadopoulos' defense lawyer. The judge then asked Papadopoulos if he read the special prosecutor's statement of offense detailing all of the lies that George Papadopoulos told the FBI. The judge said, did you read the document carefully? Papadopoulos said, yes, I did, Your Honor. The judge said, is everything in that document true? Yes, it is, Your Honor. The bad news for President Trump is that George Papadopoulos secretly pled guilty three weeks ago, and the even worse news for Donald Trump is that George Papadopoulos is cooperating with the special prosecutor, telling the special prosecutor everything he knows, and George Papadopoulos, is, Papadopoulos knows that his future depends on him telling the truth. His sentence depends on him telling the truth. He pled guilty three weeks ago to a federal felony that carries a maximum sentence. The campaign in the DNC, they paid Fusion GPS over $9 million, although nobody knows anything, and they hired a former British intelligence agent who then used current and former Russian government sources to produce this phony, fake, salacious news dossier that was full of lies, disinformation, and propaganda against Donald Trump. In other words, Clinton and the DNC funded the money to spread Russian lies and influence the election. They did it all because it is the very thing they're now accusing President Trump and his campaign of doing. They did it themselves. And we just found out this weekend, this new report from the Federalist, the headline, Obama's campaign paid $972,000 to the law firm that secretly paid Fusion GPS in 2016. Well, the same firm that the Clinton campaign, the DNC, used to pay Fusion GPS to create the fake news propaganda anti-Trump of five years in prison and a maximum fine of $250,000. At his secret arrangement, the judge told George Papadopoulos that if he continued to fully cooperate with the special prosecutor, his prison sentence could be, quote, between zero to six months and that his fine could be, quote, between $500 and $9,500. The judge then told George Papadopoulos that it was completely within the judge's discretion to impose a sentence that is either higher or lower than those guidelines that he just explained to him. And so even though George Papadopoulos had already said that he wanted to plead guilty, the judge, following standard procedure in an arraignment like this, took all the time necessary to explain to the defendant all of his rights, and then said, so Mr. Papadopoulos, are you ready to make a decision about whether you want to enter a plea of guilty or whether $2,000 to the law firm that secretly paid Fusion GPS in 2016? Well, the same firm that the Clinton campaign, the DNC, used to pay Fusion GPS to create the fake news propaganda anti-Trump dossier that they then regurgitated all over TV. Now, we also have Robert Mueller and his band of big Democratic donors that work for him now, supposedly investigating Trump-Russia collusion. And as I predicted right here on this show, there is still no evidence this ever happened. None. 
Now, former, current, and top Democrats have all said the same thing. Smoke, but no fire. Smoke, but no fire. Watch this. Have you seen anything that suggests any collusion between the Russians and the Trump campaign? Well, there's an awful lot of smoke there, let's put it that way. People that might have said they were involved, to what extent they were involved, to what extent the president might have known about these people. In an arraignment like this took all the time necessary to explain to the defendant all of his rights and then said, so Mr. Papadopoulos, are you ready to make a decision about whether you want to enter a plea of guilty or whether you wish to go to trial in this case? Yes, your honor, said Papadopoulos. And what's your decision, asked the judge. I'd like to plead guilty, Your Honor. And are you entering this plea of guilty voluntarily and of your own free will because you are guilty and for no other reason? Yes, Your Honor. 